video of um, the Sustainable Living Project. I'm Xavier and uh, for a while I've been meaning to do a little video about uh, sewing with buckskin. Uh, if you're familiar with my channel I have a lot of stuff on tanning hides and then on my blog I have various projects that you can do uh, with your buckskin but I never really spelled out how to sew with buckskin and so I want to do that today and uh, I'll cover as much as I can on the subject and if you have more questions just leave some questions in the comment section and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. And so um, I just want to get started with the basics here on how to uh, sew two pieces of buckskin together and I'm going to operate the camera all by myself so hopefully everything will be smooth. Um, so let's say that we have uh, two pieces of buckskin that we want to put together just using those scraps here and so one simple way to do it is to overlap uh, the two pieces and uh, you know maybe overlap them about um, a half of an inch or something and uh, you know you can do different things with them so I have my shirt here and here, you know, that's the back and I have an overlap with some stitches that I've done here. Um, on the sleeves here, I have an overlap as well. And so, you know, that's really the most simple thing to do. And what you're going to want to do is that some people use uh, industrial sewing machines to put their buckskin together, you know, which is fine, but I like to do my stuff by hand and so I'm going to show you how to do everything by hand and uh, so what we're gonna need to do to punch holes through your buckskin is that you can't really use needles if you're gonna sew 100% with buckskin you know you can use Glover's needles sometimes uh, which are needles that have like three sharp sides and uh, that really cut into the fibers and um, if you, you know, sew up holes and those kinds of things and use some sinew, maybe or even some threads, you know, that's a perfectly good way to do that. Just use that needle. Um, but if you want to sew everything with buckskin, um, you will never find a needle that's large enough that you can really um, use it with a buckskin thong. Uh, and the reason why I use buckskin thong instead of sinew, for example, well, you know, I don't use thread because I want to use it 100% uh, from what I've done, so tanning deer hides. And um, I don't use sinew because then you need tons and tons of sinew. And uh, it's, you know, unless you have very long pieces of sinew, it's going to take you forever. And so sewing buckskin with thong, a, um, buckskin thong, is actually my favorite way to go. And so that's what I'm going to show you mainly. And so, you know, the tools that you're going to need, though, is an awl, then, to punch a hole through it. And on my blog, I have a little article on how to uh, make a bone awl, which is like that. And so I'll put a link to it. The thing with bone awls is that, you know, they can break. You know, they're not super duper strong. And so if I were to punch holes directly, um, you know, into a board, a wooden board like that, uh, that might break it. And so you don't want to do that. Something that you can do and that I used to do too is that you can punch holes just by hand. Um, so let's say you want to punch a hole here through the two pieces of buckskin. You know, you just fold them and then you just kind of twist you all back and forth until you know you have a decent hole through um, through it um, and that's fine to do and uh, you know probably in the old days a lot of the punching through buckskin was done that way uh, mainly because you know their clothing if you look at museums they tended to be very loosely put together um, but what I've found is that people in town, like if you wear your buckskin clothes all the time, like I do, 
Um, people in 10 will kind of raise an eyebrow if things are not the way to expect. So if your garments, you know, are a little too loose, they may wonder what they're going, going to see that they don't want to see, those kinds of things. And so, you know, personally, I'm trying to inspire people to be able to make their own clothes. And so when people looked at me and were like, ooh, what is that that you're wearing? You know, that was not very inspiring to them. Now I wear Western style clothing, which means that they're very nicely tailored and um, very um, have very nice stitching on them. And now people are like, wow, did you really make that? That is so cool. I want to do the same thing. And so, you know, a little adjustment in how you make your clothing can really make a long ways in how other people may be inspired or maybe viewing you. And so, you know, the problem with doing it by hand like that, like I just did, is that it's very hard for things to remain aligned, you know, because you take both um, pieces of clothing together and you have a lot of twisting and so everything may get out of line and then you have to, you know, recenter everything and do it and then, you know, you may pull on one piece more than the another. And so, you know, doing it free-handed like that, even though it does work, uh, if you don't really care about how your stitching looks, um, it's not the best way to go, really. And so what I tend to do now is that I first punch holes with um, metal awls. And that's a simple metal awl that a friend of mine gave me. Uh, you know, really simple. Uh, what makes an awl nice is that uh, it's very nicely tapered. Um, so that, you know, it's a smooth entry into the buckskin. And what an awl does is that it spreads the fibers apart. So that you don't cut into the fibers so that there's no chances of tears. And so, you know, I tend to use and all like that. So, you know, again, I overlap my pieces of buckskin about half an inch or something. And then it's easy to just go into a wooden board, you know, something that's more solid and it's not going to break your uh, metal awl. So I do that. Sometimes, you know, when I have very thick pieces of um, leather and sometimes, you know, four different pieces will come together I need something a little more heavy duty than uh, this um, bone awl. And so what I've done is that I've actually modified a nail um, to make an awl out of it. And uh, that's a very simple thing to do as well as that you take a metal file and then you just file the end and you try to make uh, it as round as possible and have a as an even taper as possible. So, you know, in general, nails have like a very uh, thick end that very abruptly changes from the point to the full width of the, of the nail. But if you file it um, to even this out so that it's a very progressive uh, increase in the width of the nail, then you'll have a very nice tool. And then I just use a hammer, you know, to punch through all the, um, the layers and I do kind of the same thing. The dual punching and then I just keep on going. And so, you know, those are the three tools that I use, you know, very, uh, for a very thick pieces of buckskin, I just use my modified nail. Otherwise, my uh, handheld uh, metal all works great. And then I actually do use my uh, bone all at the end because you know, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, that the holes that you get out of your metal awls may not be large enough to thread the thong through. And so once I have my pre-drilled hole, you know, it's really easy for me to go back and, um, and kind of enlarge those holes just so that I can thread my thong through it. And so that's generally what I do. And you'll see that it takes a lot of time, but you know, that's just the way I like to do it. Just taking my time, can do other things in the meantime too. Um, but that's what has worked for me. And um, so I wanna talk a little bit about the spacing too. Uh, you'll see, like I said, that it, it takes a long time to do everything by hand. You know, you have to punch every single hole by hand and then you have to, um, have your uh, thong through 
and uh, it does take a very long time. And so you may be tempted to take a lot of shortcuts. And one of the shortcuts that, that's tempting is to space out your stitching uh, further apart than what I have here. And what I have here is about a third of an inch apart. You know, each hole is a third of an inch apart. Um, and so, you know, you may be tempted to have um, stitches further apart than that. The problem is, like I've done in my earlier things, like here, you know, it's an old pair of moccasins, is that if your stitches are too far apart, then they're going to pull apart. And that's not very good. You know, first they don't look very nice, and then there's more of a chance of them breaking that way. And so what I like to do is to put my stitches close enough together so that here I have kind of the same type of stitch, you know, and then I can pull uh, on them, but, you know, you can't see actually the stitches themselves and it doesn't pull apart. And so I really recommend not to take any shortcuts when it comes to where you put uh, your holes, you know, relative to each other. So I really wouldn't go any more than a third of an inch in between those holes. And um, so, you know, like I said, I'm going to show you different kind of stitches in a, in a little bit, but uh, that's, you know, one way to do it is that you put the two pieces of buckskin on top of each other, an overlap of a half an inch, you punch your holes and then you thread through. Something that I'm going to show you now that I actually just showed you is that sometimes it's nice to have a welt on the side of things. And so that's kind of what you see here. So, you know, that was my first piece of buckskin, my second one, and I put them together. And what you see here, this wavy thing is a welt. And a welt serves a couple of different purposes. The first one is that it looks kind of cool, you know, to just kind of have this wavy part pattern on the side. People tend to like that. And the other thing, too, is that if you use another kind of stitch, like, uh, you know, this one, for example, like the exit, the crosses, is that the stitching is visible. And that's actually, you know, buckskin is extremely strong, um, but the stitches is what's the weakest. And so that's what's going to wear out and break the fastest. And so if you have exposed stitches like that, you know, it's easy for them to be caught on something and then break, you know, which is fine. You can fix them. But the advantage of a welt is that it actually hides the stitches on the inside. And so if I flip this inside out, you'll see that the stitches actually running here on the edge, on the inside but on the outside they don't show at all the only thing you see is the welt and so that's a very neat trick to know how to put a welt in there in your seams um, so that your stitches don't show and so let's say that we still want to put those two pieces together uh, but instead of overlapping them we're going to have a welted seam and so if first you have to cut out a welt. And so I have another piece of buckskin here. You know, in general, if you want to sew things together, it's nice to have all the pieces about the same width. You know, if you have one that's really super thick and one that's uh, a lot thinner, it's not gonna look very nice. You know, so something like the welt, the stitches, um, and the pieces of buckskin, should be roughly the same width. And to cut my welt, you know, I like my welt to be about 3 8 to a half of an inch wide. And you can always recut them later. You know, you don't want a welt that's too thin because if it's too thin, you might miss it when you punch your holes. And, uh, and that wouldn't be very good. And so it's better to start with a th wider one and then you can always cut it later. But so say, you know, I'm gonna cut a welt that's about 3 8 to a half inch in width. 
you know, and I'm going to take it the same length as what I want to sew together. So we'll just stop it here for now. That's all I need. And when you put a welt um, on your seam, you always want to work inside out. And so, you know, say this is the final look that I want where this is going to be the outside of the garment and this is going to be the inside always work inside out and so I'm going to put you know, the inside here then I'm gonna have my welt here and then I'm gonna put the other inside against the welt So that you know, I have the inside of the garment, the inside of the garment, and then when it's gonna flip back, I have you know the outside, outside, and the welt showing. So that's very important to remember. Always work inside out when you do your welt. And so you know, here I'm just gonna punch my holes. When I punch holes, I like. You know, you want to make them somewhat close to the edge, but not so close that the hole is actually going to rip out. So, you know, about an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch from the edge is good. And then again, you know, no more than a third of an inch apart. And I'm going to pre-punch the whole thing. And I just want to make sure that, you know, I'll go this way, you know, all three pieces are aligned very well and um, the thing that you want is to make sure that you don't adjust just one piece so you know when you start working things will be kind of a little messy and you may be tempted to just only deal with the top piece and just kind of pull it one way or pull it the other just so that it matches the other if you do that however you're going to end up with pieces that don't match in the end so you know here I'm just dealing with scrap so it doesn't matter but say that you really want those two ends to meet like that at the end uh, if you just keep on pulling and adjusting the top part of it then the bottom part of it uh, will not align at the end and so when you adjust your um, your seam here you just want to make sure that you adjust everything together and that when you punch your hole you're not pulling on the top part too much you know just let it settle make sure that it's aligned and then you punch your other hole and then you check that everything is in line again don't push and pull on the top part let everything be and you punch your other hole and you just keep on going like that When you get the hang of it, you can go quite fast. You just punch through the whole three layers. Really do your best to keep uh, the stitches as the holes as even as possible, you know, from one to the next. Because depending on the stitches you use, it may look really weird if you have like one big hole, one big gap and one small gap. And so there you go. Say I'm just going to go this whole length like that. So now what I'm going to do is to need um, a thong, a buckskin thong. And, um, you know, I'll cover different stitches later on, but right now we're just going to do a basic kind of in and out uh, kind of uh, pattern. And so for that, you know, you can use a thong that just slightly longer than uh, the piece that you want to put together. And when you want to thong, you know, you just want to take a piece of buckskin, and I like my thongs to be about an eighth, an eighth of an inch wide. And again, you don't really want to pull on one end of the buckskin. So, you know, say I'm gonna start cutting here you may be tempting to just start pulling on here or something and uh, what's going to do is going to distort the buckskin there and then you may end up with like some very wide pieces or some very thin pieces and so you're just holding the buckskin you're not pulling on it and you just try to keep 
um, the thong as even as possible. And there's a little trick to that too, which is that depending on how thick the buckskin is and how tightly woven the fibers are or how stretchy they are, uh, you may want to adjust uh, the width of your thong. And that's because, you know, we're going to end up stretching the thong and, and different width of buckskin will stretch differently. And so if the buckskin is very thin, it's going to stretch out a lot more. Whereas if it's very thick, it will stretch out a lot less. And same thing if you end up in uh, an area where the fibers are really tightly woven together, like maybe some legs, where there's not a lot of stretch in them, uh, then you may want to account for that in that a part that's not very stretchy, but that is thin, uh, you may want to cut it wider. Any piece that you that is going to have a lot of stretch, uh, you may want to cut it wider. If it doesn't stretch as much, um, then you or if it's really wide, uh, you may want to cut it thinner. So I'm just gonna rambling here, but hopefully it makes sense. You know that the end product should be as even of a thong as possible and so when you get to a thick area of the skin you know like the thickness will vary as you go up so I don't know if you can see that here but maybe very thick here and then it's going to start to thin out on this end here and so on the thick parts I cut it slightly thinner like slightly closer to the edge and when I get to thinner parts because they're going to stretch more I'm going to uh, cut it slightly wider. But you know, that's what I'm gonna need here anyway. And so again, you know, the idea is that even though it may look funky at some point, if you stretch it, uh, it all looks fairly even. And so that's how you cut your thong, you know, just and you know, we'll just take some practice and playing with it and you'll see what works and what different pieces do when you cut them. Um, but then what we're going to do is that we're going, I actually have a bowl of water here, that you're going to uh, wet it a little bit. Because if you want your buckskin close to be stretchy, uh, you want your stitches to remain tight. And so for the stitches to remain tight, you're going to want to pre-stretch uh, your thong. And, you know, what I do is that I just slight, slightly stretch it in between my thumb and forefinger. And that also squeezes, squeezes it out a lot of the water. And you don't want to pull too hard on it. You know, the goal is not to break the thong, uh, just to stretch it out. So you see a pulled a lot of the stretch out, it doesn't stretch anymore, uh, it looks fairly even throughout, and so that's a good sewing thong that I'm going to work with. And then a little trick, you know, you can always put uh, knots when you start, you know, just like you do regular sewing. Um, the thing with buckskin is that the buckskin knots could be uh, very bulky and depending on the location they may actually just rub you raw and so you know even though you can't always uh, escape having a knot somewhere uh, the fewer knots that you have the better it can be and so what I do to get started to avoid a knot is that I actually take my awl and then at the end of my thong I'm going to punch a hole, you know, not too close to the edges, but you know, somewhere like that. And then I'll show you what I do with this. And so now I'm ready to sew. So I have my thong, I have my welt, I have my two pieces. Another thing that's very important is that you have to start sewing from the side uh, that's the most important and so say you have a seam like in your pants you know the most important one is the one at the crotch uh, and that's because this is a very sensitive area so things need to match up 
really well. Otherwise, it could rub you raw. You know, if you get to the bottom of the leg and things don't match up quite well at the end, it's not as big a deal because, you know, first it's not going to rub you raw and then you can always trim the ends. Um, and so, you know, that's something that's very important to remember. Start stitching from the area that's the most important for things to match um, very well. And then go down the length towards areas that are not so important. Uh, what else did I want to say about that? Uh, I can't remember. So I'll just keep going. Um... And so what I'm going to do is that now that I have my holes that are pre-drilled, you know, my thong being pretty thick, it's not going to fit there. And you may be tempted to use a needle, and sometimes I do do that. The thing is that a needle needs, the head of a needle needs to be thicker than the folded piece of buckskin of thong. And you know, I've never seen a needle that big. You know, that's why we use an awl. It's because there's really no needles that are so thick that you can do that. And so if you use a needle, what you'll find is that, you know, the needle will go through just fine. And then at the head, because the thong will be folded in half, it'll be really hard to pull out. You know, and sometimes I use pliers to just pull the needle through, and that's fine. Uh, but... You know, it just as tedious to do, really, to just take your pliers, pull it out, put your pliers down, you know, do the next stitch, etc. So that's just as tedious as what I'm going to show you, which is my favorite way to do it. So I just take, you know, my pieces of buckskin and I go through the pre-drilled holes. So, you know, sometimes for the first stitch, you're just going to have to... Um, Make sure that all the holes align. So here's the tip. And I just kind of use a rotating motion to push my bone all through and make the hole a little bigger. And then because buckskin is really stretchy and because the goal of having an awl is just to push fibers aside and not to cut through them, you know, they tend to... Um, the fibers tend to go back together pretty well. And so, you know, if I just remove my bone all very fast, uh, it's going to close the hole that I just made. And so I always kind of put my fingers right next to the hole, do a twisting motion to remove the bone all to keep the hole open. And then I can easily thread uh, my piece of buckskin through. And I'm going to stop, you know, about half an inch on the other side. And then I'm going to, you know, flip it over to the other side, go through the next series of hole, which I just have pre-punched some several holes, so they didn't really align well, but, you know, I'm just going to push through, make the hole bigger, again keep my fingers right next to the hole, and then I'm ready to go through again. And then what I'm going to do, you know, is that for the tail of my thong here, where I had pre-punched the hole, Going to make it a little bigger too. And then I'm going to thread the head of my thong through that hole. I'm going to pull it gently through so that it doesn't break. And what that does is that it's going to hold on the end of my thong right there. It doesn't need a hole. It's a flat thing. Uh, it doesn't need a knot. I mean, it's a flat thing. And so it's not going to rub anything. And uh, so, you know, that was the first stitch. And that's the back of it. 
and then just keep going here and so you know sometimes I use my all two depending on how big I want the hole the hole you can just use the metal all to punch through and then just keep going so you know oh that's the other thing that I wanted to talk about is that you know I was talking about um, the um, the stitches being too far apart you know and that you really want them to be uh, within a third of an inch the other thing that's important is how tightly you pull your stitches uh, is that if you don't pull your stitches uh, tight enough that you're gonna you're going to end up with the same uh, thing as when your stitches are too far apart you know it's gonna show the stitching and it's gonna come apart and so you know when you want that nice little wave you know the way that this wave is created is by pulling on the stitches pretty tight and you don't want it too tight so you know at this point I don't want to put it so tight that everything gets bunched up together so I just want a slight wave you know so not so tight that it's all bunched up together but tighter than just keeping it straight and so you know just tight enough that it has a slight curve to it and so when you're there you know you just keep on going I don't know what happened really here that I just keep on struggling with those things with those holes but I'll just keep a few and I'll be fine just for the sake of showing you so punch a hole thread through pull just so that there's a slight um, slight curve to it and just keep going you know it's fairly meditative if you do that a lot just in and out and in and out and you can imagine you know the grandmothers and the grandfathers sitting around a fire and doing that for hours mending clothing so and then, there you go now that I got back into the groove of finding the right holes Thing is right so see hopefully you can see the slight wave here that shows that I'm pulling it fairly tight oops okay and so you know you can just keep going like that and then uh, you know remember we're always working inside out and so when you flip it back you know that's what you end up with and so you have the outside here of the garment and then you have um, the um, um, the welt here and so when you're done you know you can take your scissors and then you gotta be really careful not to cut you know into the actual uh, piece of buckskin that make the garment you don't want to cut into the th um, the thong itself but you just want to just trim the excess welt you know, like that you know just so that it's almost flush with the garment and you know I missed a couple of holes here which is why it doesn't look that wavy but you'll see that you know when I get back into the groove of things then things look normal and then I can open um, the, um, the pieces like that and then it holds together and you have this nice wavy pattern nice welt and you don't show the stitches uh, on that side 
And so there you go, that's a welted seam. You know, we just a uh, simple in and out pattern. And uh, now I'm going to show you uh, other stitches that you can use uh, to decorate your clothes. One thing that I forgot to mention is that it's always a good idea to just um, cut your pieces long. Um, you know, a lot of things can happen. Either your stitches are pulled a lot tighter than you think, which will reduce the length of the piece that you have to work with, or various things can happen. You know, maybe you did pull a little bit more on one piece than another, and um, pieces don't match as well as they should anymore uh, the at the bottom of your pants, for example. And so it's always a very, very good idea to just keep as much length as possible. You know, don't keep as much width as possible. You always need to kind of think twice and measure twice your width so that you get it exactly right. Because when you do the width of something like, um, you know, a sleeve, for example, you know, a sleeve is only gonna have this one seam here, or if you have a pant leg, they're gonna have two seams maybe. And, you know, you're not gonna be able to cut out the excess. So make sure you get your width exactly right and work with that, but keep as much length as possible. So, you know, keep as much length of your sleeve as possible. Or even if you can, just keep, you know, 10, 12 inches longer than you think you're gonna need. And then, you know, start your seam where it's more important, like we talked about, you know, maybe um, at the armpit here in case of a sleeve, and then you stitch all the way up, you know, pulling your stitches tight. And then at the end, you know, you can leave everything long, you start the other sleeves or whatever else, you try it on, and then you see how it actually fits. Um, and what I actually recommend is that, you know, you may want to wear your clothes, whatever you're making, uh, for a few days and see how it really adjusts and stretches and all that kind of stuff, and then you cut to the desired length. So, you know, that's something I really want to emphasize because always make that mistake every time I make something I end up always a couple of inches short and it's like ah oh, if only I had kept you know five inches more and then I could have adjusted later you know so that's really something I want to caution you about mm -hmm.